Hey everybody, it's really time that we talk about Select. Welcome back everybody to another video where I try to teach you something that maybe your other professors haven't taught you and to help you thrive as a learning developer. The topic for today is select. It's a function that's been on my list to cover for a while. I did a series a while back about socket programming and making networked servers. We also talked about threads and multi-threaded web servers. And a lot of you have asked me to look into other styles of programming, specifically asynchronous IO and event-driven software design. So today is the beginning of that journey. It's one that's gonna take a while. I probably will talk about this for you know 10 videos into the future, but we gotta start somewhere. And select seems to me like a good place to start. Note that all the source code for this video is available through Patreon. A big thanks to all of you who help support this channel in different ways. And of course, if you like what you're seeing on here, please like, please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And of course, if you don't, then well, don't. So let's start today with some simple web server code. Now, this is basically the code that we wrote together a while back when I taught you how to make a simple socket server in C. I've modified it slightly to make it easier to follow, but it's pretty simple. It initially just sets up the server, telling it to listen on a specific port, and then it waits for connections. And when it gets a connection, it handles that connection with this handle connection function. And once that's done, we come back and wait for the next connection, and we basically rinse and repeat. We just do this cycle forever. Here's a quick glance at these functions. My previous video goes into more detail. So setup server does just that, is basically just calling bind and listen to set up our server socket, which is then returned for us to use elsewhere. Accept connection basically just calls accept and does a little error checking. This check function down here, that's what's doing the error checking. It just does some common error checking. And it's really just there to end the program if anything goes awry. And then handle connection is where most of the server's heavy lifting happens. Though it's really not that complicated. It's not anything to worry about. It just reads the request from a socket, which is the path to a file. And then it reads the contents of that file and sends them over the network back to the client. As I mentioned in an earlier video, this code is illustrative, it's helpful for educational purposes, but it's not very secure. So please don't go posting this on a public web server. Or if you do, please don't blame me for the consequences. Now, where was I? Let's back to main. As I have mentioned in other videos, the upside of this server design is that it's simple. I mean, it's, it's seriously just 128 lines of code with comments. And this is C, so you know about 40 of those lines are probably includes up at the top. The downside is that it's fairly slow. It only handles one connection at a time. And if one of those connections stalls, either because of a slow connection to the internet or because a malicious user is out there being intentionally slow to mess things up, it can make things bad for everyone else. Now, I've already talked about threads as one way to handle this. Links to those videos in the description. But using threads does take up a decent amount of memory. Each new thread you create takes up a significant amount of memory, and a slow connection can still mess up one of my threads. And 100 intentionally slow connections can still clog up a pool of 100 threads. So let's look at an alternative, and that is select. Like just about everything else in computing, select is not perfect. More about that later. But it does let us get some degree of concurrency without creating new threads. So here's the basic idea. Most standard I.O. functions, that's functions that do input and output, most of them use a blocking approach. What that means is that we call the function, say a read from a file, and that function blocks or pauses the current thread until the operation is complete. Once the data from the file comes back from the disk, the function returns and the computation resumes. So that's what blocking means. We also sometimes call these blocking calls synchronous calls. So the alternative is to use non-blocking or asynchronous calls. These calls make a request and then rely on an event, a signal, a callback function, or an interrupt, something like that, to let you know when the request completes. And this allows you to get work done while you are waiting for that operation to finish. Select, which is the function we're going to look at today, is sort of asynchronous. I mean, it still blocks, but it's trying. What Select does is take a group of file descriptors, which can be open files, open network sockets, or really anything file-like. and Pretty much everything is like a file in a Unix system. And select is going to tell you when there's something to read on any of them. So say I have 10 current connections and I'm waiting for data to come through on each. I can say, hey, select, watch these 10 connections and let me know when any of them is ready for reading. It also works for writing, but we're gonna focus on reading for this example. Now in this example, let's start by declaring two FD sets. This is short for file descriptor sets. Right now you can think of an FD set as a set, a collection of file descriptors. It's really a bit field which I'm planning to talk about in the near future. Also, select gives us a few different macros for working with these FD sets. 
like FD0, which I'm going to use here to zero out or initialize my set of current sockets. And FD set lets me add one socket, so my server socket, to the current set. Okay, so this code is just initializing the current set. We're going to add to this later. You probably noticed that I declared two FD sets, but so far I've only touched one of them, and that's because select is destructive. It's going to change the set we pass in, so I need a temporary copy. That's what the other is basically there for. So each time through my loop, I'm going to copy the current set of sockets to the ready socket set. Okay, this is just my temporary copy. Then I call select. With select, I tell it the range of file descriptors to check. This is not the number of descriptors in my set, which right now would just be one. It's the maximum possible file descriptor. And for now, we'll just use FD set size and we'll come back to that later. So after that, select takes in four more arguments. Three are FD sets. The first one being the set of file descriptors that I want to check for reading. The second is for writing. The third is for errors, so like errors on a socket or errors on a file. For now, I'm just interested in reading, so I pass in my read socket set in and leave the others as null. So they'll just be ignored. The last argument is an optional timeout value. So say you wanted select to only wait a certain amount of time for changes, we could pass in a timeout value there to make that happen. For now, I'm just going to leave it as null, so select is going to wait forever or until one of my file descriptors has something for me to read from it. And for now, if I get an error, we'll just print it out and exit. You should, of course, handle errors in whatever way makes the most sense for your application. Now, when select returns, we know that one of our file descriptors has work for us to do. But which one? Now, select is a bit strange. As I mentioned before, it's destructive, meaning that it changes our FD set. So we passed in the set of file descriptors to tell select which file descriptors to keep an eye on. And when it returns, now that same FD set contains just the file descriptors that are ready for reading. And that's why we made a copy. I didn't want to lose the list of descriptors that I'm watching. Okay, so how do we know which ones are ready? We basically have to go through and check. We start at zero, and for now, we're just going to go until we get to FD set size, which, as I mentioned before, is the largest numbered file descriptor that we can store in an FD set. And that's a little annoying. We'll try to improve on that later. But yeah, so we're going to go through the range of possible file descriptor values from zero to FD set size, and for each one, we'll use the FD is set macro to check to see if that one is set. And if it is, then we know that I is a file descriptor with data that we can read right now. Now, once this happens, we're interested in two cases. There's really two cases we're interested in. One is that the file descriptor I might be our server socket. In that case, it's telling us that there's a new connection that we can accept. So in that case, I'm going to call accept new connection to get the new connection, to actually get that connection. And we know that it's going to be fast. It's going to return immediately because select told us that there was data there to read. And then once we get that new connection, we use FD set to add the newly accepted socket, that's the new client connection, to the set of sockets that we're watching. So that's case one. The other case that we're interested in is when the socket that's ready to read from is one of those client sockets. And in that case, we just want to read its data and handle the connection. And then of course, once we're done handling the connection, then we want to use FD clear to remove the socket from the list of file descriptors that we're watching. And we really just keep doing that forever. I have this return statement down here. I guess it's fine, but it's not really ever going to run since this server will just run in this loop forever until I hit control C and kill it. Whatever, it's fine. And let's make sure it compiles and runs, and it does. It looks like I didn't set up any test files for this server. That's okay. The point of this example is just to show you how select works. And in this case, it's working just fine. So let's talk about the good and the bad here. We have a single thread that's avoiding dead waiting by using select. Select tells us when connections actually have stuff for us to read. So that allows that single thread to use its time more efficiently, and that's great. One limitation of my program here is that it still handles the entire connection in one shot. So note that if a client connects, sends a little bit of data and then stalls, I'm still going to stall. That thread still has to wait. And I could fix that by only handling a single read call each time through the loop, each time select returns. But that's going to require some more serious modification and restructuring to my example. And so I'm gonna leave that for another day since this already shows the essence of how select works. And of course, I do have some gripes about select in general. The main one is that I have to go through the whole range of possibilities. As I mentioned before, this is annoying. I mean, who even knows how big FD set size is?
on my machine, if we print it out, you can see that it's 1024. So that means that if I, let's say I only have two sockets, my server socket and one connected client, each time select returns, I'm going to have to check 1024 different possibilities every time through the loop. So that's not cool. I can adjust this a bit by keeping track of the largest socket that I've seen so far. So that way, if my server socket is equal to three and I have one client that's four, now I'm only going to have to go up to four each time. So that's going to improve things definitely, but it isn't a complete fix because, well, let's say that I have 500 simultaneous connections come through and this maximum starts to get big. Well, that from that point on, my loop will have to check a larger number of socket numbers until I restart my server. So if that ever happens, my server gets slower with age. And let's face it, that's not very satisfying, but it's a start. Also note that because FD set size is 1024, I can't have more than 1024 active connections, at least on my machine. On your machine, it may be different. But before we get too down on Select, it has one great thing going for it, and that is that it is portable. Select is basically available everywhere, while some of its more modern replacements are not. And sadly, folks, that's where I'm going to have to pause for today. I'm going to be improving on this example in future videos. I'm going to be talking more about asynchronous I.O. and event-driven programming. I'm also planning on talking about bit fields and bit masking in a future video, so you'll be able to see what's actually going on under the hood with those FD sets. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching. Please consider giving it a like if you liked this video. Tell your friends, classmates, coworkers, and please consider supporting this channel through Patreon, where you can get access to the source code and to my virtual office hours. So keep up the good work, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.